Um, I'm very happy to present to you this uh, contribution. Uh, it could appear uh, quite strange here because it's very, very different uh, of the previous presentation. So my presentation will deal mainly with, you can read the abstract quickly, <laughs> but, but do this. So it mainly deal with uh, old sensors, but in old sensors, but in a way they are uh, vector field sensors. sensors. And if you sense a vector physical quantity, you, you need uh, three, you have three components. And with the concept I um, propose, uh, you can uh, have uh, much more. So, my presentation first, why we have this uh, questioning and what is this uh, case study? So this is a case study, for example, for students or for um, uh, formalization, general formalization, okay? And then we'll show what we have got and some of the openings. So the starters, on one part, uh, there is an academic team, me, I am from uh, the University of Caen, and there is an industrial team that is Barkiton Company in the uh, UK. So the company has some customers request. They have development in progress. There is an incremental innovation, so not too risky. We have a new concept formulation, and it can match this. Okay. So we decided to, to work together. So we decided to work together in order to uh, Built um, an improved magnetometer. A magnetometer is uh, an instrument which makes good use of three magnetic sensors. Okay, and we want to improve the state of the art of these magnetometers by uh, using uh, this uh, concept. So we have a quantity at the input, but we will use. Uh, mainly transducing modes in order to have uh, extended output. So this is the principle of the of what I call OIMOS. So OIMOS concept. You have the physical quantity to be sent. That's called the measurement. You also have some bad influence uh, quantities. Say the temperature or the humidity or things like that. Generally, you only have a transducing mode. You have one, one input, one output. What we want to do is to have one main input, and this is to be uh, is always present. And we want to have uh, many outputs because it can be complementary. We can use uh, redundancy or discrepancy. And this is made uh, possible using uh, the modern circuits. So this is the spirit of uh, uh, what we want to do. So this is at, at the conceptual level. But we have a practical realization because uh, we decided to, to uh, show it works, the concept. So first of all, there was a flux gate from Barkington Company. A flux gate is uh, an old uh, magnetic sensor, maybe 40 years ago. And it made good use of magnetic uh, barrels and some windings. And it works at DC. It works in that range. And it works in that frequency range. So the customer request is we need to have an enlarged frequency range and um, a larger uh, measuring range. But we also want to have no degradation of performances at low frequency. So is it possible? Yes. 
Then we decided to, to add to the flux gates a set of three pairs of search cores around, and uh, these search cores, magnetometers, are the oldest one, maybe one hundred, one, uh, one and a half centuries ago, okay? Because they are based on lens, Faraday lens load. So this is very old. So, what's important here, you have that cube and the magnetic field that lies here around is sent along the barrels by the flex gate and is sent along the uh, copper uh, wire. Okay? So it looks like this because we, we have done it, of course. And so we think it's a kind of oil mode because we have one vector field at the input. We have six outputs differential. Uh, we gave the field estimation at the cube center, but there are many other reasons to, to think for this, for this uh, study case. Um, I will not discuss the uh, flux gate principle. They are old, but I would like to discuss the uh, search cores principle because they are based on Faraday lens law and they are commonly used since uh, many, many years. But people use them either with a voltage reading or with a current reading. So what is new here is that we use it, we use bus conditioning. There is a part of the frequency domain response that is read as uh, with a uh, high input impedance, impedance and the higher part is read as uh, current. So we use bus. So people have made either or we use bus. So this is um, can be uh, used uh, as well. Oops. So what is nice with uh, that system is it is highly predictable. So here you have some measurement and some computed with standard tools. So, but this is good for a study case. What you have here is a schematic of the sensor head for a two uh, coils and the conditioning unit. It's very simple. And uh, this is a standard implementation amplifier with uh, frequency gain. Uh, that's not constant with this frequency. And it acts as a pseudo integrator. So you can then have a rather large bandwidth, and here is a small bump, but this small bump will disappear quickly because uh, you can adjust the thing in a determi deterministic way, okay? This is working with uh, the tools, of course, and so this is nice for a case study for students, for example, and it also works uh, for the system we, we have. So here you have the previous um, flux gate that Bartington wanted to, to complete. And here you have uh, one, two, three, four devices with uh, enlarged bandwidth. Okay. So all are measured. Of course, when you want to use, you want to sample uh, quantity, a vector quantity in one point, and you uh, measure it by a few measuring principle. You can have interferences between the, the channels. So this is uh, this has been tested, and here you just see the superposition when uh, there are working both 
together. So it works pretty well. Uh, here has a spore spectrum for noise. And then this is uh, the, the flux gate working alone, the search call working alone. So we have, uh, we, we should not degrade the flux gate. So here you, the, the sensor are working together. And you can see that the, the, the flux gate noise is uh, the same. But you see here that some lines appear in the search code uh, spectral density. They are due to the fact that the flux gate, uh, it makes good use of uh, an applied form signal frequency. Okay, so, so this is a time domain picture. Uh, this shows that using this approach, we, we have uh, uh, provided the means to about Dicton to have a new product and, oh, sorry. So this is the main opening. The main opening is to have a new uh, sensor that make good use of uh, a search capacitor here and a search call. You can bring them together and then finally you can measure the full electromagnetic field, but in low frequency. It's usually done in high frequency domain by antennas, but you can do, do it also in, in low frequency. So this is one concept uh, that can be used here. Another uh, domain where we can use such a concept is the domain of uh, chemical sensing. We are presently working on a single membrane and it captures uh, the chemical species and we have four ways to, to produce uh, output signals. But only a capture. Thank you.